guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be what I'm eating this week and my meal prep. And for you, what I'm gonna be meal prepping is a brand new meal and a brand new veggie because I always do broccoli because it's literally baby broccoli is one of my favorites, <laughs> I have to say. Um, so I have a new vegetable. I have a healthy dessert idea for you that's later on in the video. And also, um, I'm not gonna be sharing every single meal and how to eat it. Um, but I will show you at the end of the video everything I am eating because most of these I have put in previous videos. So I will link all the videos that they're made in down below because I tend to eat the same thing most of the time. Um, but I had really fun making this new one. I've never made it before. I found the idea. I can't remember if it was on Pinterest. Um, but I did make this lemon honey, honey lemon Asian style chicken and it's really good. Um, the original recipe was gluten free, um, but they said to use panko, like breadcrumbs and all this kind of stuff and, and different things. So I made it a little bit healthier. So, and I think it tastes literally amazing. You don't need breadcrumbs. You don't need anything else in exactly how I'm telling you how to make this because I'm kind of obsessed. I've already made this video and I tasted it and it's really good. So I'm doing my intro later because surprise, I still have daylight and that's how fast it took me to make all my meals. But I hope you guys like this video, and if you do, please let me know down below in the comments what you want to see next, or if you have any other meal ideas you want to see. Um, there's also a really cool thing that I made with Bomar Nutrition that will be in this video as well. So continue to watch, and I will see you guys in three, two, one. So to make this chicken, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start our sauce. So I have a medium, I think medium sized saucepan, got my saucepan. And I'm just going to put all the ingredients in the saucepan away from the stove so that everything is clean, a little bit less mess, and then I'll carefully pull it over. So first it is going to be sodium, low sodium soy sauce, they said for healthier. Or you can even use what I'm going to use is Coco Aminos, which is a great alternative for soy sauce. This is also gluten free. And this only has do 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 the sodium 160 milligrams versus I got this brand of coconut aminos from Fry's. This one was from Trader Joe's and this one has over 500 milligrams of sodium. This one's 160, so definitely recommend the Trader Joe's version or this, this brand to buy because it's gonna be a lot less salt. Um, and then it requires some sesame oil. You can either use apple cider vinegar or um, rice vinegar and I had my apple cider vinegar so that's what I'm going to be using. Also it requires some fresh ginger. If you can handle it, my stomach, my IBS does not like garlic, fresh garlic would also be good to like finely chop up like a clove or two but I'm going to exnay that because of my stomach. Um, at the end we're going to put in some toasted sesame seeds. You're going to need some honey. I love this brand of honey. The um, wildflower, there's also other flavors that I just think it's really really good. We got some cornstarch and some lemon. You are gonna need a tiny bit of water, which you'll see in a second as I mix everything together. Um, and something that this also requires, not for the sauce, but for the whole entirety of the thing, is breadcrumbs. And they did say that you, of course, can go to the store and buy panko breadcrumbs, which is a gluten-free breadcrumb. Um, but I think the way I'm going to bake it in the oven is A, it's healthier, and you can still broil it at the end to make that crispy, so you really don't need the additive ready crutch. So I think it's still gonna be bomb without it, so I just cut that completely out of the recipe. But uh, now we're gonna go start uh, this sauce. Oh, and I also set my oven to 375 degrees, just so it's preheated and ready for when we're ready to go. Because do not forget, that's like the first thing you should do whenever you're in the kitchen is what should my oven be set? So that, that takes like 15 minutes, you don't have to worry about it. You're just ready when you're ready. So you really can do any of the ingredients listed below in whatever order you want to. This is just what I found easiest. And everything will be listed in the description box below. How many tablespoons, teaspoons, everything that it's gonna need and everything that I used in today's dish. This has the most ingredients that I've ever used in a dish before, but trust me, it's worth it. A 
Okay, so I just mixed everything together. It did say if I need to add a little bit more water to thin out the sauce, I can. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to prep the chicken, cut it all up, and you're supposed to measure out of this saucepan three tablespoons of the sauce, put it in a bowl, and then we'll mix more stuff with the chicken. Pro tip, when you wanna get an egg right out, shake the egg a couple times and then crack, and it's gonna separate the yolk from the egg white, so it'll be a lot easier to just get it separated. Okay, so now I'm going to mix all of that chicken, egg white, and just three tablespoons of the sauce. And I'm gonna place it on this paper, and then we're gonna get cooking. Um, but the way I cut my chicken, I'm honestly just lazy. I do not wanna do extra dishes, so that is exactly why I do it. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys don't judge me too much. Be careful when you do it, because it's a lot safer. Um, using regular dishware, I just hate, I hate the after clean, so. So the prep is what it's gonna take the longest for this meal, and you can actually prep this a week before, make the sauce, put it in the fridge, cut up the chicken, put it in the fridge, and then when you're ready to cook. So whenever you have time, um, but I have my oven preset to 375. I'm gonna pop this bad boy in for 12 to 14 minutes, and about halfway through, probably around seven minutes, I'm gonna flip the chicken, and then after that, I'll show you, we're gonna put it on broil to make just the top brown, and then that chicken is cooked. And when it gets closer, I will heat up the sauce until it gets a thick consistency, pour it on top, and that's the dish with some white rice that I have cooking over here somewhere on my cooker. Okay, so I left my chicken in a little bit longer than the 14 minutes because I actually doubled the recipe how much chicken there was in, but I didn't double the amount of sauce because I think the sauce is gonna be good. But um, there's about like a minute left and then I'm going to switch it from 375. I'll show you guys really quick. Focus, focus. Okay, so from 375, I'm gonna press the broil button right there. And whenever you broil food, make sure, make sure 100% that you leave this slightly open like so when you're broiling. Otherwise, you are going to burn your house down. There's a fair warning, totally so. Dogs out of the kitchen. Okay, so now we're gonna pop out our chick, or take a look at our chicken. There should be no pink. And I think I've left it in here for God, 15 minutes now. Okay, so no pink, looks nice, beautiful. Now I'm just going to give it another stir and then put it on broil. So when you're cooking your sauce, ooh, it's nice and warm from the oven. When you're cooking the sauce on the pan, you really wanna make sure that you're constantly stirring so that there is no burnage going to happen at the end or at the bottom of the pan. And you can add, it says add water as necessary, like tablespoon by tablespoon. I keep splashing in water and water because it's nice and thick, but it's okay if it's a little bit like creamier, it'll like make it go a long way versus just having a really thick sauce. So I'm gonna let that heat up again really quick while my broiler is going for only two to three minutes. You only wanna crisp the top of the chicken and then that's it. Okay, so see how the top is a little bit crispy? That is what you want the chicken to look like. And I'm actually gonna portion out the chicken and then divvy up the sauce on top. We're gonna go ahead and continue cooking and I'm gonna start cooking my veggies for you. So for our new vegetable this week, other than broccoli, because for those of you that watch my videos a lot, you know I love broccoli. Um, we are gonna be using some zucchini squash instead. I love mixing the two because they have a little bit of slightly different flavor. So greens are my favorite, but so, I don't know, it's hard. This one's my favorite, so I'm gonna choose one, but I like to mix it. So I'm just gonna rinse these, slice them, and all you're gonna do is on the broiler, or for the broiler, put a little bit of olive oil into the spices and heat that up. It takes literally like 20 minutes if that, not even. The only reason it's taking me longer is because my other chicken for my other meals is in the oven right now, so I gotta wait till the broiler. But. I'm excited, new vegetable, here we go.
My boyfriend and I both agreed that I did not get enough zucchini. So yes, I got five, but I probably would have gotten eight or nine just because of how good they are. And you can eat lots of veggies because they're good for you. So I'm going to put this separately on a non-stick pan, but what you want to do is I like to cut it down in half and then make small little cuts just because they're easier to eat. So now I'm just going to drizzle and the only seasoning I'm going to use for today is black pepper and pink Himalayan salt. Um, if you know what nature seasoning is, that is a really good blend and one of my favorites when I'm actually out of it right now to put as a mixture on my veggies. Um, the salt and pepper do just as good because the olive oil that I use has it's really good, it gives it flavor. So, just a little drizzle, just a little drizzle. And this is what you want your veggies to look like when you pull them out. See how they're kind of toasted, but they're also soft. Oh, it's so good. As most of you guys know, I like to have really fast, easy meals. So right now my other chicken is baking in the oven. My hamburger meat's on the stove top for a while. Like I have everything ready and rocking and rolling and this is taking me less than two hours. My kitchen's actually legit clean. Like, look guys, legit, legit clean. Cause um, how I cook, and as you see, I try to use as min minimal amount of things and then I clean as I go. So that's another tip, clean as you go cooking, otherwise your kitchen is just gonna be like, after you, you meal prep, you're just gonna be like, fuck. But, <laughs> a, I had this idea, and I was gonna do this the other day, and I'm glad I waited until I made this video for you guys. For a dessert, wash grapes, put them in a Ziploc freezer bag, make sure to take all the little stems off, pop them in there, put them in the freezer, oh my god, literally, it like helps with the craving for ice cream and anything like that. And speaking of ice cream, if you guys like Frosties, um, back in the day, the only one that I've ever been able to make taste like a Frosty protein wise was when I used to drink Bucked Up, but that stuff kind of upset my stomach, so I got off of it. But this doesn't upset my stomach, and if you add a little bit, like a handful of ice, half a cup of almond milk, and this to a blender, it's literally a Frosty consistency. <sighs> Um, Ronnie and I had that last night and we also added two drops of peppermint extract and some cocoa nibs. Oh, so good. So these are some healthy ideas for desserts. I will eventually make a full video on more dessert ideas, but that's what I'm going to do right now is washing these and putting these in a bag to freeze for dessert. This is how many grapes I got and this is going to last me a couple weeks. Um, I don't know how much everyone knows about animals. Just make sure that when you're doing this, you do not have grapes and near your dogs. If one falls, you freaking, you get that dog away from it. These can kill your dogs, these can kill your animals. Animals cannot digest grapes, so just be careful. I'm a really big animal lover, so that's why you're like, what the hell? But I'm just saying. But these are really, really good frozen. I just pop them in, I keep them in for weeks. Um, I do recommend you don't wait long to put them in the freezer. They're better really like fresh and ripe grapes frozen than they are when they get kind of like softer frozen. That's just me and my boyfriend's preference. Um, but now I'm gonna show you what everything I made. Okay y'all, here is what I'm eating this week. I have some chicken, the zucchini we just made with a little bit of rice. I have, this is the honey lemon chicken. Holy crap, I put sesame seeds on top. This is bomb, literally 15 out of 15. Like, I'm gonna be making this a lot more. And then I have my hamburger meat and rice, which I put with barbecue sauce. I'm gonna show you a barbecue sauce I use, and then I'm gonna show you I found really good sugar-free barbecue sauce that I don't hate, which is surprising. So this is my true favorite, will always be my favorite barbecue sauce. Nothing will ever top this. This is bomb. But if you're somebody that needs to be cutting out sugar, I found this, it is G. Hughes. And he has a hickory and then he has another flavor. And I haven't tried the other flavor, but this actually tastes really, really good. Ronnie tasted it too and we're actually pretty shocked. So if you're looking for a sugar-free one, I recommend this brand, although I haven't had a lot, but I was pretty surprised at how good it was. But this is my diehard. So, yeah. Just remember, when you're dealing with sauces, read how many, like this is like, I think two tablespoons. Yeah, two tablespoons 
is how much is in this. So if you're like gopping this stuff on, you need to make sure you're at least measuring or paying attention and giving yourself less rice or another carb because that stuff adds up quick. That's why on my hamburger meat and rice, I don't use that much rice because I use a lot of barbecue sauce. But that is all I have for you guys today. As far as snacks and anything else, because I do it six times, it's all about my nutrition, pretty much the rest of it. Or if I'm going out, or another good snack. Two olives, carry with you, carry with you in your bag. Some rice cakes. But that's what I have for you this week. A little bit of dessert, a little bit of snacks, nutrition. But I hope you guys liked this video, and if you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe, and I would really appreciate it if you guys like this. Share it with your friends on your page, on your Facebook, wherever, so I can reach out to more people and give them other ideas as well, um, because that's how we get around is word of mouth. So, all right, well, if you guys have any questions, or if you try this chicken, let me know. You need to. This is, this is probably one of my favorite dishes I've ever made, so that isn't mine. This is my recipe but I kind of made my own recipe. I'll write it down below. Okay, bye.